Galatians chapter 5. Um, every, the last few weeks we try to talk about freedom. There's freedom in God, freedom in, uh, from the law, freedom to do what we want. And uh, for you that were, most of you that were here last week, uh, we had a group of people here that had their Jewish um, uh, robes on and stuff, and they were, uh, we had a little confrontation at the end of service. And because we have been teaching the gospel, uh, we have to understand that the, the law is a teacher to us, right? Does everybody understand? The law teaches us things. Um, the Jewish traditions, you know, the seven feasts and all the things that we've been teaching show us who Jesus is, correct? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we should learn them and we should understand them and we should realize that it's, it points, every uh, feast points to Jesus. But I have, uh, according to what we've been teaching and what we've been learning and what I believe is true, we don't need to go and do all the traditions that the Jewish people put on us. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And because there's not an addition to salvation, there's just faith and believing that Jesus Christ did what he did on the cross. Amen? It's how, that's how you are saved. It's not by doing anything. It's actually because I have faith to believe that Jesus did what he did. Can you say amen? amen. Or if I don't understand. Either way, it's fine. We're going to learn that today. So we, it's faith in Jesus. It's not faith in the law or doing the law. Because Jesus said there's a new covenant. Let's look at this today. And... Uh, chapter 1, and let me explain this to you, and hopefully have a greater understanding that it's faith that we believe in our saved. That's it. There's nothing you can do. You can't earn it. There's nothing you can do. We honor Jesus in all of our lives and every breath that we take. Let's look at verse 1, and um, I'm going to read that. It says, it is, from it is for freedom. Chapter 5. <laughs> verse 1. Sorry. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your presence in this room today. I thank you that you love us and care for us. I thank you, God, that we have the freedom here to worship and honor and glorify you, Lord. Thank you that the yoke of our sins and our past and all the hardship that we've been through is cast upon you because you care for us. And you said your burden is light and your yoke is easy. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. Help us understand what you're saying. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So it says, for freedom um, that Christ has set us free, he set us free from what? Freedom of our sin and guilt and all those things is no longer part of our lives. Amen? And it says, let's look at the, the next part. So, so the yoke of slavery was because I was bound in my sin and I was guilty and I could not come out of that unless I had somebody that paid the penalty for that sin. I accepted that and I was free from that. Can you say amen? I mean, amen. Been, before I was a believer, I was in slavery, but now I'm free. I was bound by my sin and guilt. I was no uh, unworthy of any uh, good or presence of God or anything. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, we'll find out in just a second, he did something miraculously besides dying on the cross. It says in the temple itself, the curtain that was in the temple was ripped from top to bottom. And I'll share that in just a minute. And that gave us free access to Father God. Hallelujah. We are not bound by our guilt and sin anymore. We are forgiven if we simply... Believe in our heart what Jesus did was true. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If I can believe, if I can say, yes, Lord, like uh, like Andy was sharing, there, there's the Holy Spirit's job is to draw people to Jesus. And then once that happens, when the Holy Spirit draws that couple to Jesus, then they're going to have to believe, not in their previous religion, but to believe that the freedom they have now, now they're not bound by all the activities that you have to do by a religious group. A Hindi has a lot of things that they have to do annually and, and the way they pray, and there's a lot of things they have to do, but no, there's a freedom in Jesus. All I have to do is simply believe and I'm forgiven and washed, cleansed by the blood of the Lord of God says, and then I'm totally set free. Let's look at um, uh, this uh, next part, verse 2. It says, 
Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourself be circumcised, and I'll talk about that in a second, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ, for you have fallen away from grace. But by faith we eagerly await, eagerly await through the Spirit the righteousness for which we have hope. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Hallelujah. The only thing that counts. So let's, look, let's break this out. What is he saying? So there's, at this time, uh, Paul brought, um, and we can read this account in Acts also, uh, Paul was bringing these Gentile people into the temple. The, the Jewish people got all upset because they weren't circumcised. So we can't bring a, a, um, a Jewish, uh, a Gentile into the, the holiest place in the temple. That was like against the law. You couldn't do that because the Gentiles were unclean. And Gentiles are everybody that's not Jews, right? And But Jesus on the cross, and you can read this in Luke 20, um, 22, Jesus said there was a new covenant. And you can read about the account where that curtain was ripped from top to bottom. And even in Deuteronomy, it tells you uh, about how this, this cloth was made. So it had this huge, it was a thick cloth. It was, it was, a, it was just amazing how they made it. Uh, the badger skin and all these different uh, animal skins. And so it would be a really thick thing to protect the people from the presence of God. But when Jesus died on the cross, that temple, that, that curtain was ripped from top to bottom. And so what does that mean? What, why did it happen? Jesus said when Jesus took his last breath, it says, it is finished. He took his last breath. And the first thing that Matthew and Mark record is that the curtain in the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Yeah. Let me go back a little bit further. Before Jesus was arrested, he... There was this, a last thing called the Last Supper. He, there was communion, if you will. He took bread and he broke it, and he took the cup, right? Do you remember that? Yes. Even Paul records that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He took the bread, he broke it, he said, This is my body that will be broken for you. As often as you do this, do this to remember some of you, right? Jesus said this. He said, So what, what does that mean? In that broken bread represents his broken body, that in that there will be healing for, the, for everyone. He bore these stripes on his back. He got beat and whipped and, and for healing for everybody. That's why healing comes along with salvation or salvation and healing come together sometimes. That's why it's so significant. Everywhere that the disciples went and everything that, I mean, everywhere you go, we should, we should just be able to pray for people and God heal them, right? I mean, it's just part of normal uh, uh, to understanding what Jesus did. We understand the blood, what I'm going to talk about next, but the body was broken so we could be healed. And so we could pray for people, God healed them, and then we say, listen, it wasn't me that did it, it was Jesus who did it, let me share the Savior who loves you so much. Mm -hmm. Then he took the cup, and he prayed over the cup, and he said, this is the cup of the, what did he say? <coughs> new covenant. The new covenant. There was, a, there was an old covenant and a new covenant. Now, this new covenant was that now, once and for all, there was going to be a perfect sacrifice for everyone. Jesus is going to shed his blood, right? And we're, all our sins are forgiven through that. We don't have to no longer be part of the old covenant. Where the old covenant said what? We have to take a lamb. We have to lay our hands on that lamb. We sacrifice that lamb. The blood was sprinkled on the altar. And then the sins of that person was forgiven. And they had to do that annually. They did it for the nation of Israel. And they did it for the families. It was something that had to be done all the time. But now, once for all, the new covenant was this. And this is what we have to understand, folks. Is there's not an old and new covenant blend. Not an infusion of the old and new. The old covenant it tells us about the new and revel has revelation about the new, but doesn't, they don't, they're not together. Jesus said, once and for all, I'll be the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And when his blood was shed, everybody that believed, their sins are forgiven. Can you say amen to that? Isn't, that amen. Isn't there a freedom to know that, hey, I... No matter what I was or what I did or what I'm doing right now, God can forgive me. If I just ask Him, He'll forgive me. 
please forgive me, Lord, for my unbelief. Please forgive me for wherever, whatever you're dealing with today. God, you go right to him and ask him in the name of Jesus. And have faith in that name. And oh my goodness, your life can be changed. Amen. In an instant, your life can be changed. And God can make you new. And oh my goodness, all oh, your life will be never be the same after that. Praise the Lord. Some of us experience that. And it's an amazing thing. Amen. Amen. Says, so we have this new covenant. So we talk about circumcision. So circumcision was also, um, let me see if I can find it real quick here. Yes. I want you to turn to, De in the middle of the law, let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'll give you a second to find it. It's great. There's Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus, and then Deuteronomy. And then that's right in the beginning of your Bibles or on your iPhones or wherever you find it. something better coming. Amen? You're going to go through these rules. You're going to have to follow these things so you can follow me because your heart's obviously wicked and you need some rules. But later on, I'm going to send the perfect sacrifice. And it prophesied like back in Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 30, verse 6 says, The Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the hearts of your descendants so that you may love him with all your heart and with all your soul with all your lives. You remember the scripture that, uh, the verse, the uh, commandments that Jesus gave? He says, if you obey these two commandments, you will cover all the law, all the prophets, all the rules that, that you have to follow, have followed in the past. If you do these two things, everything's covered. And I've said this last week and the week before, and I'll say it, continue to say it, so we get it in our spirit, that you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And we'll talk about that in a second. So the circumcision, let's go back to Galatians chapter 5. And Paul was warning, like, listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna have to be circumcised to be into the family of God, then then you have to obey the whole law. That's not something you have to do. You could do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Paul was circumcised. He talks about it later on. It's not like it's a bad thing if you do it, but the point is if you do that because of the because you're trying to be righteous, then you have to obey the whole law. Right? You, and we can't do it. So what Paul refers to here again is not circumcision of physical circumcision, but circumcision of the heart, which is also what he was referring all the way back to Deuteronomy, that our heart has to be changed toward God. Right? I can't do anything physically to uh, be better, closer, or be better to God, or closer to God. There's nothing I can do on the outside, no activity I can do to make me more righteous or holy. There's no church attendance or Bible study attendance on Wednesday night or missional community. None of that is, is going to get you closer to Jesus besides faith that starts right here. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So we don't have to obey all the rules. We have the freedom to just trust God. It, isn't that beautiful how he writes this? It says, it, it is for your, it is for you freedom that Christ has set us free. Not to do what we want, and I'll talk about that a little later, not to do any all the things that will satisfy our, our, our flesh and our lust and all that. That's not what he's saying. We said we have the freedom to worship him and honor him and accept that forgiveness, and we're set free from guilt. We're set free from bondage. We're set free from the law. We don't have to do all the things that the law tells us to do. We right. can serve God right now the way you are because he loves you and he died for you and he wants you to know that he loves you. Circumcision of heart, not circumcision of some physical thing. Because what happens in church life, and you know this if you've been in a Christian for a while, there's things we have to do. Like, I have to go to church on Sunday. Now, I love having church on Sunday. Don't get me wrong. I love when we gather together. I love everything. I love uh, uh, the worship. I love the fellowship. I love all that. But I do it because I love Jesus. And I want to be with his family. I don't do it because I have to. And that's what, and we've talked about that before. It's not an obligation I have to be here on Sunday because I'm free from the guilt of that. I come because I want to worship and praise and be encouraged in the kingdom of God. And that's why we come together. Amen. That's why I feel that the, the spiritual growth in our church is happening in our small groups more than it happens here. Today, we celebrate Jesus. 
Today, we encourage you to continue to walk and fight the good fight of faith and serve the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what we're doing today. Come on, saints, you can do it. You can love everybody because that love is what came from the throne room of God into your heart so you can just love and that love is going to draw people to Christ. Amen. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. You can love your family members that you hate. I mean, you don't like. I mean, you have problems with. <laughs> Right? You can love them because that love is going to draw them to Christ. You can love your neighbor that, you know, just, or just love people that are different than you, or just all the different things I can get into today, but I won't get into that. Yes, I will. I mean, everybody in the world, God loves. And if we're supposed to be the glory of God in the earth, then we should share that love, and that love is going to draw people to Jesus. Right? Right. You, they don't, oh. So we should be a friend of everybody. Amen. It even goes on to tell you if you were being persecuted, Paul says if you're being persecuted, you do it, you just let, you let the persecution happen and you serve God and love God. I'm being, he said to himself, I'm being persecuted for Christ's sake. Did I lay down and take the beating, take the whipping, take, take the persecution because I want to honor God. Because God is going to get revenge and he's going to take care of that situation. Yeah. Even unto death. Right. I changed the way I did uh, do baptism. I think I shared that uh, a while ago. When I tell people you're going to get baptized, if you're going to get baptized into Jesus, you're going to get baptized not only because you want to identify with the family of God now and you want to obey him and you're laying down your whole life, but now you're, gonna, you're willing to die for the kingdom of God. It's not like, hey, I'm just like on the outside looking in, like, hey, you know, that's for Pastor Bob and, you know, for, for Dion and all for you guys. No, no. That, it's for the whole, all of us as believers. So we really lay down our life like Christ laid down for us. Because not because we're, we're, because we love them. Because we love the people that's persecuting me, persecuting us, so they can come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior like I do. Who's ever heard that before? God loves them. Think of the meanest person in your life right now. God loves that person. And he's going to use you to bring them to Christ. Right. No, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy. No, this is, we have freedom. That This is what counts right there. Right, uh, verse, uh, in verse 6, it says, The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. And this love, if you look it up, it's like the, it's God's, it's Father God's love. It's like, I'm, it's like, there's no condition in this love. It's just you love. I didn't deserve God's love. I was a sinner. I was no good. I was unworthy. And God loved me and reached out and touched me. And I said, yes. And that same love, is a, I want to encourage you to flow through your heart and flow, flow, through, flow through your life that the world will know Jesus. Say, I can do it. I can do it. Huh? I can do it. Come on, everybody. I can do it. Yeah, yeah. I can do this. This is not hard because Jesus did all the hard work for us. See, we don't have to die for that person. Jesus already died for them. All we have to do is express God's love to them. But what about, I don't know, fill in the blank. There's no what's about. God loves everybody because God wants to see the whole world saved. Amen. Because what is the alternative to that? It's death. And we, we have life and we want to give them life. Okay, let's go to verse 7. You were running a good race. You were running, now this is Paul telling the church, church there that they were running a good race, but something happened, all right? You were running a good race. Who cut in on you? Who's ever run a race? Ever, who's ever run track here? Anybody run track? Yep, you run track? So you know how you have to run around, you have four or five people on the track, right? And if you're, if you're good, you get in front just a half a step or so in front of the person that you're running next to, so you can cut them off, so you can get in that lane, so you get ahead, right? So you, I mean, I'm competitive, you know, I'm going to knock them down, but I mean, there's not, you can't knock them down, you just got to get ahead of them. So if you get ahead of them about a half a step, they have to slow down and let you in. And then you're ahead of them, right? You know, you guys run track, you know what I'm saying, right? And so who cut in on you? This, this is what this is referring to. Then, um, Paul must have run track, I guess. I don't know if he did or anything, but he uses all these nice things. You know, run the race as to win the prize, right? You're not gonna run a, you're not gonna get in a race, and you know, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna come in second. Nobody stands on the line on the starting gun and go, okay, I'm gonna be second, or I'm gonna be third, right? No, you run the race and win the prize. And if you're a believer in Jesus, we're all gonna get the prize. Right. 
Just run the race as you're going to get the prize now. Like you're a winner right now. So run, run the race as you're going to get the prize. That's what Paul says here. Yeah. Who cut in on you? This kind of uh, perversion does not come from the one who called you. So somebody's going to cut in on, on your belief. Somebody's going to cut in on your Christianity. Somebody's going to come in and cut in on your faith. And, and, and it didn't come from God, all right? It came from the enemy. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will not, um, you will take no other view. So here you got a little yeast goes in. Where, where's, where's my bakers in here? You know, you bake bread, you use yeast, and it raises up, right? It gets through the whole bread. So a little sin can get in everything, right? A little disbelief, a little a confusion into your Christianity, and all of a sudden you don't know what, what I'm supposed to be believing in now. That's why last week was so, so important. We're teaching the truth of the gospel, and all of a sudden we have people come in and say, no, you have to do this in order to be a Christian. And I'm saying, no, you don't. What you have to do is you have to believe and you have to love. Jesus gave us two commandments. Love God, and I think we're all working on that, right? I want to love you more. I want to be like, I want to be like at the end of worship. I want to have that in my life all the time, right? I just want to walk with God and talk with God and know God. God's going to help me in every decision that I make. And then also somebody comes along and says, hey, you know what you have to do? You have to do th these five things in order to be a Christian. Well, I thought I, Pastor Bob just told me all I have to do is believe in Jesus. And now you're telling me I have to do this. There's confusion. Who's going to come in? Who's, gonna, who's telling you something different? You have to know the gospel, which we're going to be teaching over and over and over and over here because there's no other way that a person can be saved except through Jesus. There's no other way. There's no tradition. There's no religious activity. There's nothing but Jesus. Amen. And if we can get that in our spirit, in our hearts, we're circumcised in our heart over the things of God and not over the activity, then we go, oh, I, I, I don't have to earn God's love. He's already loved me. It's so liberating. There's so much freedom in that. I don't have to earn a thing. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't have to earn. God loves you. Amen. I mean, I need to read my Bible yeah. because I need to get that in my spirit, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I need to pray and pray and seek God's face. So we provide some time for that. And you guys shared that we're going to have the ninth. We're going to have prayer here for an hour. If you don't know how to pray or you're afraid to pray or you're mad at God or whatever, whatever you're dealing with, just, just come. We want to teach you how to pray and, and have a freedom to pray to the Father and, and know that Father listens to you and he loves you and he wants to hear you. Amen. And hopefully that you'll grow in your prayer life. You'll mature in your prayer life. And that's what we hope to do as a family is grow in that also. I mean, I guess those are, those are some things we'd like you to do, you know. I can't make you do that. My heart is, in my heart I want to know God, so then I want to read His Word. In my heart I want to know God, so I want to pray with Him. In my heart I, I want to share God because now it's just overflowing in me. Right? So that's, you know, it changes. And, and say, like, okay, Ashley, you have to do these three things so you can be a super Christian. And you're like, wow, I got to number one, but I don't think I'll ever get to number two. You know, and, I'm, and you work towards that, and it's like this craziness in your head. You just, it's, this is not that hard. Maybe it is hard because the enemy is always trying to put requirements yes. on us. And that's what we have to rebuke and have to take authority over. A lot of times the enemy will cause us to think that, oh, maybe they, they don't like me because I didn't show up to church today because, you know, I had my, my babies were born and I was having a baby and I couldn't make the church on Sunday. So, you know, I told Ashley uh, at the hospital, I said, Ashley, you don't have to come to church tomorrow. <laughs> she just gave me that look like, get out of here, you know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's just, I'm so happy you're here today and, and, and so wonderful. But, uh, yeah, there's no requirement. It's just I love to be with you, and God wants to be with you. And if we want to have an environment here on Sunday that's like that, we want you to have that environment in your missional community groups and, and just in your everyday life and, and at work uh, and everywhere we go. Let's go further uh, 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 and look at this scripture in verse 11. It says, Brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? Paul saying, hey, if I preach circumcision and you have to have this physical thing done to you, then why are, why are they mad at me? Because I'm not teaching that. In this case, uh, the offense of the cross has been established. Abolished. Sorry. 
So if what Jesus, if I go back to the law, listen to this very carefully, it's very important. If I go back to doing the things of the law, I'm saying what Jesus did was not good enough. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Jesus work on a cross, he, when he said it was finished, you're saying, uh, it's not finished. I still have to do these certain things. There are some things I think we have to do, we'll see that in just a second. We have to obey our spirit with the Holy Spirit over obeying our flesh that causes us to stumble and fall. So there are some things we have to do. Don't get too, too far off on that. But there's a freedom to know that I'm set free because Jesus accomplished everything on the cross for us. As for those um, agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate <laughs> themselves. Oh my goodness. Just carve your soul, whole self up as some other religions that we see in, in the Old Testament. I mean, Paul was pretty funny when he, I mean, he was a very intelligent person when he wrote. You know, he's trying to say, hey, listen, you need to obey God and love God, but listen, all this stuff. See, Paul was only, he came to, the, he was a, the disciple or the apostle to the Gentiles, but he also ministered to the Jews because the Jews were requiring the Gentiles to do certain things. And he's saying, no, 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 you're messing up here. You're, you can't do that. It's, there, it's two requirements. Love God and love, G, love uh, uh, others. That's what the requirements is. Let's look at it a little bit further. It says, you, my brothers, were called to be free. Free from what? Free from the law. That's what he's talking about. But do not use your freedom to indulge uh, this in the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. So let's look at it. Don't Use your freedom now because you don't have to do the requirements of law to do anything you want in your fleshly desires. God, by His Spirit, was given to us so we will obey the Spirit. And I'm going to talk about that next week because I don't, I can't talk about all that in one week. I split this up in two sermons, chapter 5, because walking in the Spirit is so, so much about walking in the Spirit. I want to share with you next week. So we're going to end here just a bit. But we should understand that we don't have the freedom to do what in our nature tells us to do. Because then that would be sin, right? Our nature leads us to self-gratification, blah, blah, blah. We just know that causes us to have problems. And it's not walking in the Spirit. So when we walk in the Spirit, we have, our heart is pure towards God. There's love that flows out of us. We walk in, in that love. We don't judge our neighbors. We don't, I mean, we have a different attitude about life. Because we look at them like Jesus sees them. A lost people that need a Savior. We have that. This is a prayer maybe you could pray this week. God, give me your heart for the people around me so I can love them like you do. Amen. How do you see those people that I feel I get about? <laughs> you know? Or is that just me? You know, you just want to, God, oh, you love that person. <laughs> can I love him too? And it's, Okay, you know, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Maybe not out of your own strength. That's why Jesus gave us the Spirit of God to help us love like He loves. Amen? Let's go down to the last part. It says, um, the entire law is summed up in a single command. All right? Underline that in your Bible right there. This is really important because when false teachers come and they try to bring things into your life that are not true, you come back to this scripture where it says, this is... What's filled, the law is fulfilled in this one commandment. And look what it says. Love your neighbor as yourself. You don't have to do anything. Listen, if there's a requirement, if you, if you say, okay, Pastor Rob, what's one thing I have to do to be a, a good Christian? I will say two things. One, love God. All right? Obviously, he saved you, so you're going to love him. You're going to learn to love him. You're going to Your faith is going to grow as you seek after him. As you read, as you study, as you fellowship together with God's people, your faith will grow in him. It's going to happen. The other part is something we have to do with our will. We have to, again, that's why it's commanded to us to do this. It's our will. It's hard for our will to do this, is to love people like God loves them. So I, I submit my will to God's will so I can love like God loves. Amen? Even though if they persecute you, even though if they spit on you, even though they whip you, even though they take you and put you on a cross, no matter what happens, that happened to Jesus, you have to love those people. Because then when Jesus was on the cross, he didn't curse them, he didn't, he, he loved them, even from the cross, even when he was being whipped and, and spit upon and mocked and all the things that happened to him, Jesus loved those people. And he could easily call the legion of angels to his side, he didn't. 
because he wanted to demonstrate God's love, the greatest love that ever happened, that Christ sacrificed his life for us. We weren't even born then, he still loved us. And this is summed up, the law. So I'll take people, when people get our, you know, we had a little bit of, uh, you know, we talked a little bit uh, about this in the hallway after church Sunday, you know, and I just shared with the gentleman there, I said, listen, there's only two commandments, and this one's really important. i got to love you because you're, you don't agree with me, but I'm not going to go back and be in bondage. I'm free from the bondage of that stuff. Amen? I, I celebrate the Sabbath every day. I give God thanks for all my food all the time. I give thanks for every time I get my car. Thank you, God, for my car. I would not have this car without you. Thank you, Lord. Everything I have is His. I give Him glory for everything. Amen. All my life is His. All my accomplishments is His. I did nothing less except for Him. Amen. So he gave me the talents and the skills that I have. I don't. I didn't know where they came from. It's not my own. It's Him and Him alone Amen. that is all the glory for everything that I do or everything I accomplish. We give Him praise. Amen? And we take that and we just love on our neighbors so they can come to know Jesus. We're, we, we are working so hard with one of our neighbors. And I'm just like, ah, oh, just, I'm so close. Like, they could be, like, Christians tomorrow, I think, or even this afternoon, you know? I'm just, I, Lord, you know, and it's just, it, it, at first it, it's an activity. Like, invite them over, have friends, have lunch, have meals together. But then after a while, then it's like serving them, you know? And, and just serving and, and doing what I can. And then it's like, now i got to ask the question. You know, like i got to stop just acting like I'm serving them and actually just ask the question. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you, you, you know like God loves you? Or whatever God tells me to say, I want to say it, right? Because all those acts of kindness and all that stuff is to draw them into the kingdom. I love them. I mean, I was just like, I was telling Tina yesterday, I have a, you know, we have an experience who, like, you know, you've got people that... You know, they're not Christians yet, but, I mean, they're just part of our family. And we want them to come to know Jesus. I mean, like, I want to disciple them into knowing, like, I want to take them down a journey that all the answers in their lives is Jesus. And I'm just, we're so close. Yesterday was a, another great experience with them, and then I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, they're, like, so close, God. What do I need to do next, you know? And, 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 and of course, I have to be a little patient because I get a little excited, you know, when I see people coming to Jesus. I want them to... Like, be free from the sin that's in their life. But just be, have, the, have the grace and love of God and, you know, be able to trust God and everything. It says here, look at this again, just one more time. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be de destroyed by each other. So he's warning the church. This is for us. This is for the church. You know, we're supposed to love our neighbor and quit bickering between ourselves about what we're supposed to do. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to share Jesus. We're the glory of the Lord in the earth. You are. Everyone here, you're the glory of God in the earth. And our, to be the glory of God, now we're just we're not little lights shining around so we don't, people, we're lights shining around. Not to, just to, to illuminate light, but we're light to, light to draw the unbeliever to Jesus. We're the light by the Spirit of God that draws people. Wow, well, you're so nice. How come you love me? How come you did that? How come you, you know, gave me your lawnmower? How come you did, you know, whatever you do, you do that because you're drawing them. To, and God's using, by, if your heart's right, I'm telling you, this is where it comes down to. Are we circumcised at the heart or are we just doing the law? That's what I challenge you this morning. Are we doing what we have to do or we do we really love God? That's what he's saying here. Do I... You can go back and try to follow the whole law. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Right? If that's what you have to do, you got to obey all of it. You can't just obey part of it. Or you can say, I'm circumcised at the heart. My heart is different now. Because I love God and I love people. Do I, do I really? Cause what is my mission this morning? Like, you guys all came to church this morning. Why did you come? I want you to examine it just for a minute. Why did you come to church? Because your sister brought you, right? <laughs> Um, you know, so why did you come to church this morning? Because I wanted to. <laughs> because I want, amen, brother. You know, I want, so it wasn't because I had, I was obligated to, but I wanted to be with God's people, I hope. That's what my heart is. And I wanted to be encouraged to go out and fight the good fight of faith and run the race as to win the prize. So I want to be, I want to encourage this morning, and I want you to just take a second. I, I guess this is what the Holy Spirit told me to say at the end, so I want to say this. In all this, we don't have to love God because
because he loved us first. <clears throat> but the key to actually activating that love is to love your neighbor. I love God, so this is just a, I, I, after I, it doesn't come, it, it's a relationship that God wants to get deeper and deeper with us, but it doesn't, it doesn't cultivate into fruit until we actually give it away. Else we're just selfish in our relationship with God. Me, I want more, I want more of you, God, I want more of you. Hope you're there, at least there. And then as we cultivate our, that love, and as we share that love with the neighbors and our friends and our loved ones and our enemies, and everything that's contrary to what we really think we should do, and just do it for God's love, then all of a sudden there's fruit happens. All of a sudden now we see people coming to Jesus, and we see people following you because they see that there's something better in you than they have in the world. <laughs> See, we can cultivate this relationship, but we have to give it away. Because when we give it away, then that love, we, 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 can, we can go to Japan and be a missionary because I see a people that needs Jesus. That's why, mission, that's why you got called to do that. Because you see a hurting people without Jesus, and now you're giving that away. You spent a lot of years learning to love God, and God poured into you, and now you're just going to give it away. So we, and we can do that every day. And all of a sudden, the fruit that we see in the Word of God will come to fruition. Think about it. Everyone in their, this room, if we did that this week, and we, we had this relationship with somebody, we could lead them to Jesus this week. Share with them that they need to be followers of Jesus instead of followers of their own fleshly desires. And they begin to change. Then all of a sudden, you get excited because this thing works. It's not just about me. It's about giving it away. Amen? And the love of God will flow through you. It will be amazing. Hallelujah. Right where you're at, just bow your heads and just ask God right now. How do I really love my neighbors? Or maybe the bigger question is, do I really love you, God?